Welcome to Lola's Frugal Life Podcast. If you're on a mission to be more frugal with both your time and money, you're in the right place. In this podcast, we talk about topics that help enhance living a frugal lifestyle. The goal is to save time and money where we can so that we can use the rest on what matters most to us. We talk a lot about both time and money management so that we can waste as little as possible on both. We do this while also embracing a progress over perfection mindset. If that sounds good to you, then please stick around for the latest episode right after a few quick words from our sponsor. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right. New music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Lola's Frugal Life podcast. Quick update before we get into today's topic. So I mentioned a while back we had been working on our kitchen and we stopped right after or right before Thanksgiving, I think, because um, there was just going to be too much going on with the holidays and I didn't want to be trying to be involved in a big project like that while we were um, doing all the holiday stuff. So we finally just got back to it. Um, we're just doing kind of like a refresh on our own. It's We're not doing like a major kitchen renovation or anything like that, but we did um, repaint all the walls and we repainted all of our cabinets, like taking the doors off, sanding them down um, and paint priming and painting. And so it's been a really big job, but we've been doing it a little bit at a time. So we started it like right before Easter and then we worked on it for a while and then it got real hot in the summer and we couldn't keep going. So then we quit for a little while and we got back to it again in the fall and we got a pretty good amount done. And then, like I said, the holidays came and then um, we put it on hold again and we're back to it now and we're getting very close to being done. We finished painting the last um, cabinet, like the cabinet itself, not the doors yet, but um, I got all of that done. We have all the doors off. So now we just have to finish getting the door sanded and then painted. And then our kitchen job will finally be done. So mostly just sharing that to encourage you that you can definitely take a big project and do it in little pieces over time. It might be a little bit annoying if you like to have things done and not have like an open project going on for so long. But if you can have a little bit of patience and you um, just don't have the time to do a big project all at once, just to kind of doing it a little bit over time, you'll eventually get there. And it's definitely worth it because it made a big difference in our kitchen. And then as far as my loving lately right now, I'm loving my new haircut. I had let let my hair grow really long, which is my usual um, habit of getting it getting it cut and then saying I'm going to keep it on the shorter side. It's not short. It's like past my shoulders. But like for me, it's on the shorter side. And then I always say I'm going to keep up with it because it just feels so much nicer. And then I let it grow and let it grow and let it grow. And the next thing I know, it's almost down to my waist. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have to get my hair cut. So I finally went and got it cut. It's like so much. It just feels so great. It's so much better. And I actually did make an appointment. Um, for five months to get it cut again so that this time I will not keep procrastinating on making that appointment. So anyway, that's what I'm loving right now. My new haircut, it just feels really good. Um, If any of you out there are like me and procrastinate on getting your haircut, you know how good it is when you finally do get it cut. So anyway, we're going to talk about smart grocery shopping today. So I'm sure this is not going to come as a surprise to many of you, but meal planning of course, is my number one tip when it comes to being smart about grocery shopping. When I seriously began meal planning and creating my grocery list based on the meal plan, I really began saving money on groceries. I didn't purchase items anymore that I thought I might make with the, for a meal. Um, every item that I purchase is going to be used to cook a meal in the upcoming week. And if something else comes up and I have to skip a meal, it just gets pushed into the following week so that I end up not buying additional items next week when I can use the food that I already have on hand for one night. I also use an app that's called Meal Plan um, that I have all of my recipes in so that I can just lay out my meal plan for the week and then I create my shopping list from that 
meal plan so it has all the ingredients needed in the recipe um, that I'm going to need to be that I'm going to be cooking the next week. So it makes it really easy for me to make sure I'm purchasing everything that I need for all of the recipes because it's so annoying to have almost everything you need for a recipe, but then you're missing one ingredient. And then maybe if it's an important one, you kind of can't even make the recipe. So make sure, making sure you have some method of getting all the ingredients that you need for the meals you plan to make for the upcoming week is really important because that helps um, you make sure you're using up all your food also. Because even if you have a meal plan, if you forget to get things you need for certain meals, you could potentially end up wasting things because you didn't make that meal. And if certain ingredients are fresh, they could end up going to waste because you don't wind up using them up. Um, like I said, I use an app, but of course you don't have to use an app. It can be done on paper, um, You know, just looking at the recipes and jotting down what items you need to get. Um, it's really just kind of being, um, you know, intentional about getting those ingredients that are needed for your recipes and making sure that you're prepared for what you want to cook for the upcoming week. And then, of course, you definitely want to make sure that you're checking what you already have on hand, um, even even kind of before you start to create your meal plan, because you might see that you have some things that you have in the freezer or in the pantry that you can just put on your meal plan for the next week before you even start thinking about purchasing items. And that can save a lot of money, too, because you can make sure you're using up what you already have and then that's less you have to purchase when you go to the grocery store. And then again, of course, um, when you're making your shopping list, do a double check too, just to make sure that you don't have things on hand that you're putting on a list. Sometimes we think we don't have something until we're putting it away and putting the groceries away and then we realize that we already had something on hand that we just purchased again. So you always wanna kind of do a double check to be sure if you have an ingredient um, or not. That way, you know, if you definitely need to purchase something um, and, you know, meal planning can save you even more money if you check the sales and you plan your meals around some of those items. Sometimes I do this. Sometimes I don't. Um, in for, for me at this time, I'm not as concerned about the sale prices. Not that I don't want to save money. I do. I think that's an awesome step and I have definitely done it when I can. But just the fact of having a meal plan alone is so much of a savings for me that I still feel happy about what I'm doing. If I at least have a meal plan and I'm just purchasing the things that I know I'm going to cook, um, you know, because it takes extra time to shop the sales first and then plan your meal plan around that. And sometimes I just don't ha wind up with the time to do that. So I'm not saying it's not a great benefit. It definitely is. Um, it's just something that I often kind of skip that step, um, but I'm still happy with what I'm doing by meal planning and knowing that I'm only purchasing the ingredients that will actually get used so I'm not wasting money on food that we're not going to eat. Another tip to um, grocery shop smartly is to compare prices. It's really important to compare prices because often you might not realize that you're paying more than you have to. Just because something's on sale does not always mean it's the best price. So you always still want to check and compare um, you know, the items that are on sale compared to maybe the store brand or some other brand that may be at a lower cost that isn't on sale. Sometimes we might wind up just thinking because something is on sale that it's at a great price, but sometimes it's still considerably more money depending on the brand. So definitely make sure to check that also. And then of course, um, you know, checking the the quantity too. Sometimes other quantities might wind up being a better deal, even though, you um, they, you know, something might be on sale and then the different quantity, you might think like, oh, well, that's more or less. So it's either going to cost more or less. But sometimes depending on the the sale price and the, the different um, quantities that are available, like say if a smaller quantity is on sale, you might think it's a better deal and a larger quantity is not on sale. Depending on the item, the larger quantity might still be a better deal. And if it's something that you use regularly, it might be better to just purchase the not on sale item and, um, you know, not worry about the sale item. So while some of these um, prices might not seem a lot, like you might think, oh, well, it's only 50 cents here or 50 cents there. Um, when you think of the number of items that you purchase um, each week when you go grocery shopping multiplied by the number of times you go grocery shopping a year and kind of add those costs up, it can definitely make a big difference if you have a large amount of items that all could potentially be at a little bit of a lower cost. So don't kind of discount um, that that doesn't make a difference because it definitely can. And then 
substituting or skipping ingredients if you choose to. A recipe is really just something that someone created to make a meal. There's no rule that a recipe must be followed exactly as written. And if a recipe calls for a specific ingredient that you know is not going to get used up, try to see if you can use another ingredient as a substitute. Or see if that other ingredient doesn't have a big impact on the recipe, because in that case, you might be able to just kind of skip it all together. If you really must purchase the ingredient, try to search for ways that you can plan to use it up in the future. Um, you know, it's sometimes you might not be familiar with an ingredient. If you can look it up and find it in other recipes, at least if you can kind of incorporate some of those things on your um in your future meal plans, at least you won't be purchasing something that you're going to end up throwing away. And then another um, thing to think about is that you don't always need to get the best price per per pound, per ounce, per whatever the quantity is. Um, I used to really struggle with this for a long time because I felt like if I was purchasing less of something for a higher price, that I was making a um, a, a choice that wasn't the best for our financial situation. And that's not always true because if you're not going to if you're not going to use up all of something and you're just purchasing it because you're getting a better price per ounce, but it's going to wind up sitting there and potentially going bad and you're going to end up throwing it away, you didn't really save anything. And sometimes we just have a small amount of money left in our budget. So say you need you decide to pick up a $3 package of cheese rather than a $10 package because it's less per ounce, but buying the $3 package of cheese is going to give you, you know, seven more dollars in your budget to spend on something else, then maybe just get the lesser amount and stay within your budget and don't worry about the fact that you could have got it for a cheaper price per ounce. The most important thing is buying a quantity that's at the best deal for what you're actually going to use and what actually fits in your budget. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're grocery shopping. Another tip is really try not to um, count on spending more this week, but making it up next week. It's very difficult when you go over budget to try to make up your expenses the following week in the future. Really try to do the best you can to stay within your budget amount if you're really trying to stick to a certain grocery budget um, spending limit. Because when you go over budget one week, it's never easy to think you're going to be able to come in. I'm sorry, it is easy to think you're going to come in under next week, but it's very difficult to actually do. So instead, if you really do have to spend a little bit more in the current week, then maybe see if there's another budget line item you can pull from instead of your grocery budget line item, because you're just going to be potentially cutting yourself short the following week and grocery budget is hard to stick to as it is and it's not doesn't always have a lot of wiggle room in it if you already have a fairly low budget and you have to buy the groceries that you're going to need to feed your family then there's online grocery shopping um, for either delivery or pickup if you find that you struggle with keeping to your list when you're at the store and you end up making impulse purchases consider placing your order online there's, there are charges associated with um, grocery pickup and delivery, um, but it can really help if you struggle with making impulse purchases. Plus, you can see your total before you check out, so you have options to make changes or adjustments if you need to to stay within your budget, where once you're up at the checkout at the grocery store, it's obviously not that easy to make those decisions. Now, if you're gonna do online um, grocery ordering, it is more expensive um, to do delivery um, because there's usually additional fees plus a tip um, for the driver. Um, but with, de with delivery, you still can get the benefit of limiting impulse purchases without the extra cost. So it's kind of a toss up. I do the pickup because I feel like it's a better deal for me and I don't mind going out and picking up the groceries. I just don't like to go in the grocery store anymore. Now that I've started pickup, it's kind of like hard to want to go spend the time in there and I just feel like it's so much easier for me. I can add items to my cart throughout the week and then everything's just there when it's time to place the order. So think about that as a potential option for being able to save money by making sure you're only purchasing what you want. And like I said, the ability to be able to make changes if you see that the total has come to higher than what you really wanted to spend. And then I just have a few extra kind of random tips that I thought of while I was putting this episode together to share before we wrap up today. 
Um, one thing I really like to do is to keep granular um, chicken bouillon on hand for broth. Whenever a recipe calls for broth, I pretty much never use anything but bouillon because I don't like to waste things. And so often the amount of broth called for in a recipe is an odd amount. So I really just like to keep bouillon in my cabinet and then just make the amount of broth that's needed for the recipe. If you haven't used it before, it's basically kind of just like a dehydrated broth, I think. I think that's what it is. Um, and you just kind of add water to it to make the broth for your recipe. And it's just easy because it's dry. You can keep it in the cabinet. And that's that's kind of a tip that I find saves a good amount of money because a lot of recipes that I make do end up calling for chicken broth. So rather than constantly buying canned or boxed chicken broth, I just always have that on hand. Another tip that really makes a big difference is really trying to use up those side dishes during the week, um, using them with other meals. If you have some leftovers, um, side dishes, or even parts of a main meal, if you just put it out with your other um, meals that you're serving, oftentimes people will wind up just eating that food. Maybe they'll just add it to their plate. Maybe they'll have it as an alternative, but um, just really kind of trying to make an effort to use up the foods that you've cooked so that you're not um, you know, throwing things out. And then also, if you do have to skip a meal during the week, make sure to think about what other meals you have coming up and which ones have fresh ingredients that need to be used up and which ones don't. Because you want to make sure if you if you have to skip a meal and push it forward that you're going to prioritize which other meal you're going to wind up pushing further um, into the future because you're going to cook this other meal that you didn't cook one night. Um, you'd rather put a meal aside that is primarily based with frozen ingredients rather than something that you know has to use up some fresh ingredients that you have sitting in your fridge, maybe produce or whatever that needs to be used right away. So just kind of think about which meals to kind of move to another time frame based on what ingredients need to be used up most priority. And then if you do have to put a push a meal ahead, make sure you actually do push it ahead and set a day to make it. If you have ingredients on hand in the freezer for a meal you were going to make this week and for whatever reason you didn't wind up making that meal, put it on next week's meal plan so that you do end up using that that meat or whatever it is that you have in the freezer so that it doesn't end up getting freezer burned because you forgot all about it. Another um, tip is just to kind of switch up meals if you need a lower cost option. If you're just having a week where you really could use a little bit of extra savings on groceries, you know, maybe swap out um, a, a meal with like I don't know, some more expensive ingredients like steak or chicken or something to like a breakfast for dinner night or um, tacos or something that's relatively inexpensive. Um, it, you can kind of save a decent amount of money. It's not huge, but it'll save you maybe $10 um, per night, maybe up, even up to 20 depending on the ingredients if you go with a lower cost meal than something that might um, be a little bit more expensive. So that can definitely save you in your grocery budget. And then of course, like kind of like what I was saying before, just always make sure to use up the ingredients that are going to expire sooner. And then if you stock up on something that because it's on sale or because you're getting a good deal on it, make sure you plan to use it. Don't just let it sit there. You bought it so that you could eat it. So you don't want to say, oh, I got this great deal on this and then just kind of stick it in the freezer or in the cabinet and it never gets seen again. So that's it for today. I hope that these tips will help you um, save a little bit of money on your groceries. And um, I really, really thank you for listening. And I will see you back here next week. So thank you for checking in for this podcast episode. And don't forget, you can always email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at lolasfrugallife. And you can find a blog post for most of my episodes and definitely all of my meal plan episodes at lolasfrugallife.com. You can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash lolasfrugallife. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I could see your listening. Also, if you can please take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, those ratings and reviews are what help the show come up better in search results so that other people can find this podcast. So that will really help me in growing my audience. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have an awesome day.